908 8 past 9, the Bruce and Dan Show. They are in for Don and Roma. I'm Jay Cartford. John Cass is off on assignment this morning. But joining me is the winner of the 89 WS uh, Next Talk Show host, Be a Star, whatever the thing was called, Stephanie Trussell. Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning, Jake. Uh, what would you think of meeting Bruce and Dan? It was big, huh? That was a part of the night. Was um, Also, winning was great, but meeting them was um, another thing that um, made the night a lot of fun. They were very gracious to me the whole night, and actually everyone there. But it's um, even more exciting to get an opportunity to work with you today. So um, you know, another thing that I get to check off my list. Well, that may have been a big night for you, but the, the big night for, for Barack Obama and Mitt Romney is the second debate which uh, kicks off at 8 o'clock uh, our time. You can hear it here on 89 WS. And afterwards, uh, J.D. Hayworth is going to be taking calls, live calls from everybody uh, for reaction until 11 o'clock. Uh, so people are looking at this debate because of what happened last time. The president did not do so well. He didn't bring his A game. He said he was too polite. And the question is, what do you expect tonight? Well, I expect Romney to do what he did last time, stay true to his core beliefs and just, you know, talk about the issues that are important to people that have been living under the Obama's policies that have failed for the last three and a half years. You know, I know that tonight is all about the undecided people, which kind of, you know, blows me away. The people are actually still undecided at this point. For those who don't know, last week we had uh, the chairman of the debate commission, Frank Ferencup, on. And he described how they uh, pick the people who are going to ask questions. They rely upon the Gallup organization to look for people who are truly undecided, who have no opinion whatsoever. (laughs) And what they do, after they've picked these people, 60 to 80 people, they all submitted questions. And uh, CNN is the main broadcaster of the debate tonight. So the moderator is going to be Cindy Crowley, and she will look at the questions and she will pick out the questions. And then the people will ask the questions, I guess. Well, I I just can't imagine what kind of questions you could have at this point if you're undecided. You know, what I, you know, I tend to be a little condescending at this point, even if you're not a person that's paying attention to the issues. It's pretty clear that couldn't be any more clear differences between the two candidates. And you'd have to try really hard to avoid all the issues. And so at this point. You know, I question their ability to be able to write on the three by five cards. They're they're questioned twice. And um, what could they possibly who are the undecided, I guess, is is the the thing that sticks most in my head. But looking forward to tonight, I think it's more about to just firing up the base. I mean, the people that have already made a decision and just to to hear, you know, the guy that we picked up on the national stage again, just saying some of the things that we need to hear just to get everybody excited about getting out there and voting, no matter if they're thinking, oh, my guy has it and I don't need to vote or. Or, you know, thinking that, you know, he doesn't look good nationally. So I this is, in my opinion, it's just about kind of a cheerleading session just to, to, to get everybody ready to um, stay focused on Election Day. So Well, they always play the expectation game uh, to try to determine ahead of time how, you know, so you can decide how people did in the in the different debates. And they've been playing this. They've been playing in so many different ways. I don't even know what, what, what a win would be tonight. So my question to everybody who's calling now, 591 8900, what for you, whether you're an Obama supporter or a Romney supporter, what would be a win tonight? What would you have to see for your person to declare victory in the debate? Well, again, just um, I know the questions will be have been chosen by the person that's moderating. So I don't know about the 47%. I keep thinking if it were open form, if I were Romney, I'd open with that. I'd, I take away the, their zinger and just talk about that and not back down. Don't apologize for it. Just kind of explain what he meant by that. But I just need him to be um, just the strong, smart person that we know he is the person that we know that can lead us out of what we've been dealing with over the last three and a half years. So just don't back down. Don't be afraid to um, confront Obama and some he he has to run against his record. He's not running against Romney. He has to run against what we we've all witnessed. We know what his policies are and they don't work. So this is should be, you know, what he shouldn't even worry about doing prep. It's just a matter of just, you know, hey, Obama is the one that has to defend what he's done. So let's go to the phones. John and Sterling, Illinois. Good morning, John. Welcome to 89 WLS. Say good morning to Stephanie. Good morning. Uh, Hi, Stephanie. I I just turned the radio on about 45 seconds ago and I heard you talking about uh, uh, undecided voters. It occurred to me these these people have to derive nothing from party affiliation. They must have little bias, uh, preconceived bias anyway. And 
maybe they're not the most involved voter class, but they, they probably have specific concerns. I don't think they're necessarily uh, incompetent, uh, 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 more than uh, just uh, apathetic. How, John, how do you think they determine, though, when they're listening tonight and and the vice presidential debate plus the first presidential debate, both sides, uh, w- when they did the fact checks, show that both sides were, were lying on different things, or maybe lying's not the right word, but they weren't totally truthful or they were twisting it or somewhat shading it. How do people who really don't pay attention every day, how do they determine what's true and not true? Oh, I really don't know. I decided months ago I... I... Uh, like to stay informed, and I can't imagine what issues are swinging these people. But it's obviously happening based on the polls. All right. Thank you, John. Sure. How do you determine, Stephanie? Well, I just, you know, when they said people are unbiased or they haven't paid attention, you have to basically have, you know, a set of core beliefs that you believe in and decide which candidate aligns with what, you know, things that are important to you or um, just basically common sense of what has worked and what hasn't worked. And, you know, being a Chicago Democrat and, and growing up in, in what we you know, what's happening, that's one of the reasons that you you keep looking at Obama's background. And he's he is who he is. And that's his core. And he comes from Chicago. And, you know, we. we we're witness to what doesn't work when you're living under that kind of regime. So to me, it's it's hard for me to believe that anybody just completely, I think those are probably Obama voters that are having second thoughts and maybe they're the undecided, but anyone else is hard for me to believe that they haven't paid attention enough to what's important to, to the American people. So we're going to get right back to uh, more calls. 591-8900. Stephanie Trussell with me, Jake Hartford. Uh, she's in for John Cass this morning. But first, it's 915 time for a quick check of traffic right here on 89 WLS. 916. Thank you, Dave Stewart. Traffic right here on 89 WLS. Stephanie Trussell with me, Jake Hartford. Taking your calls at 591-8900. The debate tonight, uh, what for you would be a victory when it's all over? Bill and Bolingbrook. Good morning, Bill. Good morning, Jay and Stephanie. Real quick question. How, why don't they hand out a Rorschach, the inkblot test, to both of them and explain what they see there? That's my comment. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. <laughs> Thanks. That'd be different. Yeah, it would be. <laughs> That'd be very different. Uh, Tom on the south side. Good morning, Tom. Yeah, a couple things. Like I said to the screener, it's like um, the fact that they can find malleable pieces of putty that haven't formed an opinion at this point in time. It's like you have an opinion on chocolate. No, haven't decided. <laughs> it's um, it's ridiculous, but it is what it is. Can't they ask each other questions? And um, I don't know. For me, for Romney to win, he would need to call him out because it's lie after lie after lie with specifics. Well, look what happened in the first debate when they were talking about the $5 trillion tax cut. It was, yes, you have a $5 trillion tax cut. No, I don't. Yes, you do. No, you don't. Yes, you do. No, you don't. He needs to say you're lying without saying you're lying because that would be a horrible soundbite. He needs to just say you're factually incorrect and you know you are incorrect. You need to stop it. Maybe say stop the Alinsky tactics. That would be a hell of a soundbite. Yeah, but who would... Who would explain, Stephanie, who Alinsky is to most of those people? Exactly. I, you know, I think it's interesting that we have this debate for the undecided. It's almost as if we're rewarding people that haven't been, pay, been paying attention, and all of a sudden you get your own special de- debate because you, you just can't make a decision. John on the Eisenhower. Good morning, John. You're on 89 WLS. Yeah, you know, Steph- she's, Stephanie's spot on, okay? I mean, you know, not in her words, but you've got to be a goof to be, to be undecided right now. I mean, most people... They know who they're voting for, but um, those are the people when you get in line. At, those are the people when you get in line at McDonald's can't decide what they what they're ordering. <laughs> those those are the ones. Uh, Rob in a car. Good morning, Rob. I'm me. Good morning. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, then you called me. You called Stephanie. What's oh, on hey, your mind? How you doing? Good morning. Hey, how you doing? Hey, welcome to the club. Oh, it's my pleasure to be here. Hey, yeah, I'm a little bit undecided about which one of these two guys I should vote for. Somebody give me some insight. <laughs> Wait, you're truly undecided, Rob? I, I most definitely am. So what issues are you looking to hear about tonight that are going to help you go one way or another? What are you waiting to, for, you know, what do you what do you hope to achieve tonight, you know, with the outcome? What's your big problem? Economic, uh, this economic issue. That's what I'm really concerned about. 
Okay. Well, unemployment's under 8%. Aren't you happy about that? It could be better. Well, anything could be better. But, you know, with a little, with a little, well, my, my frame of mind, I think with a little help and cooperation, it could have been a whole lot better. Oh, okay. Now, what if I'm wrong? Well, you know, he, you know, he's the leader. He should. His job is to get everybody to work together. So he can't. You know, as a, we've all been bosses in different ways, whether in your family or professionally. You you can't blame people. You have to take a responsibility. So to say that the other side didn't work with me, that's not a good enough excuse. That's like the dog ate my homework. Rob, so. Rob, Rob, would you have liked to have seen the Keystone Pipeline built? Personally, no. No, why not? Uh, you know. Mm. It's better ways to me. I figure we can get all, you know, if it's going to put people to work right away, then yeah. But, well, you know. Well, building the pipeline means you need people to build it, which means putting people to work right away. No, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. That would have been 20,000 jobs. 40,000? 20,000. 20,000? Yeah. But what length of time? Are they temporary or permanent jobs or what? People well, can make a career out of or what? Well, you know what? A job is a job. If you don't you don't have one, you need the money, isn't it, Rob? Yeah, yeah. But I look long term. I have like five year, four year plan. I don't look for like a year or two. Well, well okay. Rob, Rob, you don't sound really undecided. You sound like an Obama voter. That he sounds just, like he shouldn't be driving a car. That's what he sounds like. Like you're making an excuse I'm for Rob his. Bye, 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 Rob. <laughs> Watch out for Rob. He's driving out there somewhere. Undecided. Uh, 921. And if he gets in line for McDonald's, get out of line. Walk in. 921. Time for uh, a lot of stuff. And we'll be back after this. 89. WLS. Tonight at 8, join the candidates vying for the Oval Office in the next presidential debate. Live from Debate Central on your Common Sense Election Headquarters. 89. WLS. Coming up to 929, Jake Hartford with Stephanie Trussell taking your calls. Let's get a call in quickly, Stephanie. Glenn and Gray's Lake. Good morning. Uh, first, I want to thank you for at least inquiring about other people's opinions. But uh, the issue I have is that I have a lot of friends that are Democratic and have been strongly. They hate what Obama's done, but at the same time, too, rather than voting for Romney, they might set it out. And I also have some issues myself in the sense that I have a 26-year-old disabled daughter who may or may not have insurance next year. And at the same time, I have uh, issues that uh, may exclude me from my wife's policy if Obamacare kicks in. So I'm not exactly sure. You know, it's, it's getting bad when you got to vote for the least of the evils. You know, I wish uh, we could have some candidates that were actually... Um, truly strong. I do believe in what Ryan's doing, and I've seen what he's done in Wisconsin to help uh, Governor Walker up there, but, uh, you know, it's just, it, people are just getting tired of, you know, unfortunately, especially in Illinois, what we're presented with. I understand. Glenn, thank you very much. He, he kind of has a lot of issues and makes it hard to decide who to go for. Well, you know, when we just look at the two candidates that we just went resume to resume, we have a person that, um, you know, a community organizer versus a successful businessman. So we'll uh, see. We'll continue to take calls. 591-8900. Uh, right now, it's 930. Time for news, weather, traffic with Dave Stewart right here on 89 WLS. Bruce Wolf and Dan Proft. 89 WLS. 937, I want to remind you, the 89 WLS box office opens every Thursday. It's your chance to win tickets to an upcoming show or event. And this Thursday, the 89 WS box office is overflowing with prizes. You can win tickets to see an advanced screening of Cloud Atlas starring Tom Hanks, Haley Berry, Hugh Grant, and Susan Sarandon. Or you can get tickets to see Barbara Streisand at the United Center on October 26th. For more information, go to WSAM.com. I'm Jay Cartford with Stephanie Trussell. In, she's in for John Cass today. He'll be back tomorrow. Uh, we're talking about the debate, and Stephanie, the caller right before the break uh, with with the news there, mentioned he's got a lot of different issues. He he's they like Obamacare because in the pre existing conditions. However, he they Obamacare may also cancel some insurance policies. Companies are cutting back. Uh, he's got a twenty six year old uh, child who won't be covered anymore. So there's a lot of different issues, and people don't know which way to go. Just like a lot of companies don't know which way the taxes are going to go, and they don't know whether to make investments and hire more workers or not. Right. I think with um, it's pretty clear with 
with Romney. He wants to put everybody back to work. He's not about giving and providing and making sure Obamacare. It's about empowering everyone the ability to to be in charge of their own destiny. destiny. So I can understand what that person would have and not being aware of all their details and, and the circumstances in their lives right now, whether or not the gentleman was working and, and his wife's insurance. But that's what I hear when I hear Romney talking about just the America as a, a group, not as an individual that needs something from the government. So, again, tonight is going to be an opportunity. I, I look forward to the debates because I have my laptop, my tablet and my phone, and I'm going issue to issue debating with the people that I've you know, jokingly called Obama Knights. And, um, I, and I love to attack each, each issue as a, a candidate will approach it or talk about it. And, and I can't wait. This is like Super Bowl for me. Uh, and so and I hope that person that, that called in, I, you know, I, I again, without knowing all of the details of his life, you know, just listen to what Romney has to say. And it's all about, you know, getting everybody back in charge of what important to them. So Derek in Downers Grove. Good morning, Derek. You're on 89 WLS. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I think um, I was listening to a couple of things. The the gentleman about the, with the disabled daughter, I think that it's, it's not just an individual case. There are many, many, many people out there that are struggling with which way to go. And as far as um, I look at my situation and I look at the, the friends that I have and we get into these political conversations all the time. They're Republicans, Democrats, independent. I consider myself to be an independent. I voted for uh, Obama in the last election and I'm genuinely looking at both candidates at this moment right now and thinking who do I feel has the ability to take to where we need to go? I look at Romney. Do I think that he's qualified to be the president of the United States? I absolutely think that he's qualified to be the president of the United States. Looking at his resume, looking at him on paper, I think that he's qualified to be the president. So when I look at him, okay, look beyond the paper, look beyond the resume. Now what, what do I think? I just I genuinely do not feel deep down in my gut, my instincts, that he, this is something that is visceral, something that is in, innate in him, that he truly wants to make this country better, as opposed to just a professional step. This is just the next pro- the next step in his professional development. Well, let me, let, let, me play, let me play the devil's advocate here, because uh, we're going to get a lot more callers in. Okay, Obama ha- wants to make the country great, but do you think he has the ability to do it, based on the past four years? I think that he has the ability to do so. I think that he has the right intentions to do so. Do I think that he has all the tools in his tool chest to do it? No, I don't. But then again, that's why I look at both sides to see, well, now let me look at the other candidate to see what he has to offer. And it's just, and I look at, you know, the things that he says on Monday and then on Tuesday is something completely different. And then on Wednesday, he's saying one thing. And then on Thursday, his campaign is recanting what he just stated. And and that's the problem. And, then and, who's, and who is that? You're talking about Obama, right? That no, sounds I'm more. About Romney. No, I'm so talking you, about Romney. you admit that Obama has an empty tool chest or kid, whatever. And you're willing and, and you know, he's not doing a good job. And you question Romney as if he's a successful businessman. So he just wants to run for president or be president to like pad his resume well yeah you know there there is something to that you know his father wanted to be president and his father couldn't do it so he's he's trying to uh you know complete you know what his father couldn't he has five sons and a ton of grandkids and there are a lot of ways he could spend his time to to even compare the two is is it makes no sense to me and I can't even respectfully disagree with you. That just you, you admit that. You but see, know. that's where. But that's where Obama has Romney because Romney comes across as cold, and Obama comes across as somebody who really cares. And in, in the debate tonight, in a town hall format, Obama will have the advantage because he comes across as somebody who cares. Well, that's all he needs. It's, you know, I can I care about you and I have good intentions. Well, that's not cutting it. And, and you, no one can you know, say that the last three and a half years is how he envisioned it to be and not what he promised us in 2008. So, Ralph and Lansing. Good morning, Ralph. You're on 89 WLS. Good morning, Jay. Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning. Um, you know, one of the earlier callers who uh, said he really didn't know, but it was interesting when he got on the line to talk with you, he said, yeah, okay, go ahead. Um, kind of didn't even understand the basic premise of calling into a radio station. And he was so, driving, too, by the way, Ralph. Well, that's 
scary. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of people driving who shouldn't be driving, whether or not they're on the phone. But um, you know, the, the whole idea that somebody uh, doesn't get that it, to me, I told you, screener. It, it either means that they're they, they're just uninformed to the point where they need other people to tell them what to do. Which, in which case, maybe you shouldn't be voting because if you're just going to listen to what other people tell you to do, then clearly you have no thought process of your own. Stay out of the voting booth and leave it to us who actually know the issues. <laughs> Thank number you. two, I get, I get, I get tired of of uh, I have uh, some liberal friends who, who you know when they when they kind of want to pander and they don't want to argue a little bit with uh, the conservatives, they say, well, you know, all the candidates are the same. Mm-hmm. And Stephanie, like the point you just made, uh, no, I can't even respectfully disagree with those things either because Obama is an empty suit. I think that uh, Clint Eastwood, when he bought the, brought the chair out and talked to the chair, cute, it would have been better if he hung a suit on a hanger and hung it from a hook on stage. I agree with you. Thank you, Ralph. Thank you. Thank you. We'll get back to more of your thoughts out there. 944, back after this. You want to know what the candidates are saying? Turn to your common sense election headquarters, 89 WLS. 952, want to remind you, Chicago's talk leader, 89 WLS, on the air and on iHeartRadio. I'm Jay Cartford. In for John Cass today is Stephanie Trussell. Get your get your mic on there for you. Uh, enjoying it so far? Oh, I'm having a blast. What a better way to spend a couple hours than talking about issues that are very important to everybody, especially in preparation for tonight. Uh, Jim and Downers Grove, good morning. You're on 89 WLS. Uh, thanks for taking my call. <clears throat> I had to watch, uh, uh, I do a lot of uh, TV watching, and I saw some lady on uh, you know, from Ohio who uh, was interviewing about who she's going to vote for, and she said, Oh, I'm going to vote for Mr. Obama. He's such a nice man. And uh, he talked about what he said. Well, what about the issues? She said, I think he's doing a great job. Well, let me tell you something. I'm a senior citizen. My Medicare has gone up. Every time I go to the doctor, I get a bill. I never did that before he was president. And if people would just look, how could you not? know what's going on in this country and in the world with this guy he hasn't had the tools he hasn't had the tools jim i mean he hasn't had the tools i guess well you know what there's a lot of people that don't have them because i just don't see even in our own state of illinois where the president's where we have a president that's the resident of illinois we're not any better off than we were four years ago we're worse he hasn't done anything for illinois and generally that's what they do they they take care of their own state he hasn't done a damn thing for us i just don't see how anybody that's got half a brain could ever vote for a guy that's destroyed the economy, and then they want to give him another chance to even make it worse. I think that's what people want. They want it. They want it to be worse than it was before. So, thank you, Jim. Yeah. Thank you. Very well said. Very well. The people are frustrated, and they and it all comes down to: do they take it? Do they take a gamble on Romney, or do they go with what they've had for four years and hope it? What happened in the last four years will get better. That's what it comes down to. Stephanie and Jake Inford. She's in for John, but we're both in for Bruce and Dan. It's 954 back after this. WLS. 959, Jake and Stephanie in for she's in for John, but we're both in for Bruce and Dan, who are in for Don and Roma. We're shifting away from the debate. When we come back, we're going to talk about more money for driving on our roads. All that and more as we continue right here on 89 WLS.